Welcome to CSEC Biology TCP. I am Mr. Wilson from the TCP Academy. I am looking at the May June 2023 paper for which a lot of students would have said to me, man, that paper was a paper. I spoke to some students in Maypen Clarendon and I, I said to one boy, what was the biology paper like? He said to me, sir, to be honest with you, it came and it went. A couple of girls told me something similar. So somebody had asked me to have a look at the paper and I did have a look at the paper and I don't want to be the person for gloom and doom. So what I did, I started by looking at the paper and I'm going to be showing you some things on the paper and then you can make your judgment as to what the paper was like. If you have not yet, like, share and subscribe. Please be reminded to do so now. And when you subscribe, you want to click that notification bell and select all you want to also like the videos as soon as they come out from time to time there you want to share the video with as many persons so that more persons can pass the subject and you'll be getting more of this video in your inbox you want to watch the video to the very end as you're going to be finding a host of playlists over there hsb biology and agriculture for sure environmental science coming pretty soon i want to remind us that you can still sign up to my marathon even for the month of choice, we've been having marathon for both bio and HSB. My students are saying that, yes, they were, they were ready. They were ready for the exam, and I'm really, really happy for that. Let's hop right into the exam paper. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today. This was question number one. And if you observe here, CXC told you where they got this uh, micrograph from. I made sure that I visited the website and it's a pretty interactive website if you're supposed to click and click and you, you learn so much about micro microscopes. You learn much about this diagram. It says here that it is bioninja.com. So I went over there and I looked at the, the cells that they have over there. You can just type it in, an electron micrograph on the Google platform and you'll definitely see it. So the first question here is what type of microscope was used to produce the image? Now it says here, you know, if you were supposed to observe, it says somewhere in this thing here that it is actually a, an electron micrograph. So if you were supposed to pay attention to that, you would pretty much get the answer. If any at all, you had any idea about microscopes. So this was actually uh, electron microscope. If you have any inf any information about microscopes other than light microscope, I'm hoping that you got. But if you did not, there are so many other questions on the paper that you should be able to answer and still ace your exam. I'm sure you can find a bit of this. I'm sure you can find a bit of that. I would have seen persons sending in my inbox. I'm on YouTube. Thanks for my videos that I did put out on the microbes and the I'm going to be moving on, looking at another question. I'm going to be going to an entire question for you. And as time allow, I will do the rest because I'm in the process of pretty much getting students ready for the human and social biology exam. And we are also preparing for the multiple choice. Here we go. Question number two was pretty much the first question I saw yesterday when a student, a student actually drew it and sent it to me. I said, what's happening here? And I'm like, oh, we did that in class. Why wouldn't you know? We did that in class. Uh, so what I did here, remember that this is meiosis. And meiosis is going to result in four daughter cells. And the four daughter cells are going to be showing variation. So definitely the cells are not going to be identical. So all you needed to do here was just to do as you're seeing here. What I did was to just take one part from here, put here, take one part from here, put here, take one from here, put here, put here, put here take one. And if you observe, all the four cells here are different. Some similarity, but of course, there's major variation among the daughter cells. 
four data cells here. It says here that we should state whether the data cells produced by meiosis are haploid or diploid. Remember, diploid is the full number of chromosomes. So mitosis would be responsible for the diploid number, and that would be taking place in somatic cells. Meiosis is taking place in autosomal cells, so it pretty much produce the haploid number of chromosome, which is half number of chromosome. And that is pretty much synonymous with, of course, the egg and the sperm cell, or if it were supposed to be the plant, the pollen and the ovum. Now, name one part of the body in which meiosis occur. Of course, it is going to happen in the reproductive organs. So, of course, meiosis is taking place here in the ovary as uh, eggs are being uh, produced. Name the structure within the nucleus which contains the genetic material that's going to be the chromosomes. This is pretty nice here. Kara and Ketura are the daughters of Mr. and Mrs. Balra. Yet, their observable characteristics are very different. Use your knowledge of genetics to explain why the observable characteristics in the sisters are different. Identify two possible reasons in your response. The sisters are products of sexual reproduction, which give rise to variation. During sexual reproduction, the fusion of a gamete is a completely random process which creates variation in the gene combination. Meiosis also leads to variation through crossing over in prophase 1 and the random alignment of chromosomes on the spindle fiber. These are reasons for the differences observed among organisms that show variation. So I would have outlined three. I showed you during fertilization. I also showed you during prophase 1 of meiosis. And again, I spoke about the random assortment or random assignment of a chromosome chromatid on this spindle. Say two reasons why meiosis is important to living organism. It ensures the gametes have the haploid number of chromosomes. So remember, we're going to be putting the egg and the sperms together. So if it were, for example, human, 23 from mom, 23 from dad, when that fuses together, we're going to be getting that 46 chromosome. We want to make sure that the organism is true to form after fertilization. So meiosis is very important in ensuring that that 46 chromosome is maintained even after the fusion of the male and female gamete. It also ensures that there is a variation within the species so that it is not uh, well overly or easily susceptible to changes in the environment. It allows the organism to up, adapt due to uh, the variation that is among the organism, it allows them to adapt to changes in the environment. So should there be any sudden change, the organism should feel a sudden shock that will cause a total wipeout of the species. Meiosis also occurs in flowering plants, and we're supposed to name the two gametes produced. If you were following the paper, you'd realize that there must be something there on genetic. It's either going to be genetic diagram, it's going to be meiosis, mitosis, and probably you would have gone over into variation. You would have observed that the menstrual cycle is always there, so something is going to be there on reproduction. So if it's not the plant, then it's going to be a human, but something is going to be there. So then, of course, we would have gone through fertilization. The plant would have gone through the flower in our Martin classes. And of course, we would have informed our students about the pollen and ovum for this question. That takes us to the end of question number two. You want to follow us for more videos like this, and you want to make sure that you subscribe to the channel. You want to also make sure that you sign up to our Martin class. It is going to be worth it. I want to say this, however, please do not sign up to the class if you know you don't have time to come, because our classes are like study until you say when. We start at 5 in the morning, first class ends by about 9, then we start again at 11, then we have another class, we have three classes for the day, and the classes go on to the learners say, it's time to stop. We're having fun over here at TCP Academy in our Martin classes. It's been a pleasure working with you, 
I do hope that you are reaching the videos on my channel. There are many videos, multiple choice paper two, you name it, live session that I would have completed both biology and HSB in the live session. So if you have access, get to the back end of the channel, look for a live and you can see particular topics covered that you would have interest in. Now, please be reminded to like, share, and of course, subscribe. And when you subscribe, click that notification bell and select all. I want you to also like the video and share the video with as many persons as you can. That will pretty much encourage us to produce more of this kind of a video for you. We do hope that your dreams were met in that exam and you are already preparing for the paper one. Last year, many students differed on their CXC exams as they were afraid of failure due to their level of readiness. This year, Mr. Wilson and his experienced team from tcpacademy.teachable.com is here to help you get exam ready. Subscribe for free to tcp-academy.teachable.com. We offer courses in CXC Biology, HSB, English Language, and many others. There are several offerings to each course. Enroll in one today.